Good morning, okay. darlings. Let me get, my, I'm going to just, I wanted to wish you well, and I'm going to go grab a red veil as soon as I get myself out Wonderful. Of Welcome. So good to see you, Mama Jade. Oh, thank you, what darling. What an honor. What an honor to have you here. Um, Why is it not letting me get out of this horrible filter? I don't <laughs> be yellow. <laughs> thank you, um, Mom. Oh, God, what is going on that it won't let me do this? Oh, here we go. No, okay, mom, we're on just so you know, too. We're in we're on live. We're in a group in the group. We're admit, starting to admit. I see. Forgive me, my darlings. No I'm problem. so happy that you're all admitting as I go grab my red shawl. I am so honored to be with all of you. It's so exciting to be uh, also on sort of the eve of Easter where I'm noticing yeah. for myself and I'm sure um, you are as well, but this feeling of uh, the Magdalene being at the heart, at the divine feminine heart of Christianity and here really? all over the world in every country, we have yeah. the Christian tradition celebrating you know, yes. honoring, being in reverence, uh, moving into that devout, their devout nature and center. And so I'm just, I noticed I picked up this morning that the thread of that, um, that energy of renewal, really, that, that coming, yeah. the, the rising, the arising within us. Yeah. And of course that ties into the ancient traditions of Ostara, of Est Est which became Esther, became Easter, you know, right. so it's like it's all connected, and uh, I'll look for. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that too. If we have time today to just yeah, follow we'll, the thread, we'll in. see what which threads get woven in. All right. Well, we're just gonna wait another minute and let anyone else who's coming in come in. Yeah. We'll yeah, it's, it's started. interesting. As I was preparing for this, I was really feeling a lot of the Easter energy. It wouldn't normally be the things that I would be talking about, but it seems so obvious with it being this weekend. And today is Monday, Thursday. Tomorrow is Good Friday, regardless of when it is you're watching this. Um, that's yeah. that's the energy that we're kind of holding here. And uh, so it's timely. Seems really timely. I feel the same way. And I feel like we're we're riding this wave. So as I welcome everybody coming in, and those of you who are going to be joining us after on the replay, uh, we're going to begin by uh, welcoming you all to our, I, don't, I know not to say necessarily an Easter gathering, but we've got that good Easter energy. So I'm going to begin by introducing myself. I'm Julian Dubrow. I'm the founder of the Divine Feminine Network. And we're an online directory where you can find and list products, services, and events. And of course, come to these wonderful gatherings that we're hostessing uh, and have different members leading. So please come over to our website and uh, su support us and our members when you can. So we offer this free online gathering today. I have the great pleasure of welcoming Claire Sierra. She is an author and the founder of The Magdalene Path, which is a guidebook and also a live course where Claire walks you through this reclamation of the divine feminine within yourself, within your life, within your work. And she does this through the once hidden teachings. Uh, well, and I'm going to say now the, the revealed teachings of Mary Magdalene. And Claire also offers a free online gathering where she leads the group through the Magdalene Rosary, which is, in my experience, deeply soothing, nourishing uh, to both my heart uh, and to my soul. And so I wanted to make sure to share that with you because Claire is also a healer. And I've had the great good fortune of not only being her friend and colleague, but also of receiving, being on the receiving end of her healing work. So today, I've asked Claire to come and help us celebrate the Magdalene and the divine feminine within ourselves through her teaching, through her path. So um, I think the Magdalene is one of the divine feminine figures at the heart of Christianity, of course, along with Holy Mother. And as we are coming up to Easter, as I was saying in the beginning, I want to take a deep bow 
to the divine feminine within this tradition and within the traditions that came before it. I want to just note that uh, we're going to have a, a, a beautiful teaching today, and then we're, we're going to be led through a practice. And after the practice, if you are in a state where you just want to linger in that energy and state, please feel free to just go ahead and leave the call. But for anyone who wants to stay on and share and ask questions, Claire's with us for the full hour. So within that, Claire, I welcome you and I turn it over to you, dear one. Mm, thank you so much, Jillian. And thank you to you, Kim. I'm so delighted to be here with both of you and with all of you, sisters and brothers who are awakening to the divine feminine. So we'll start with, I think we'll just start with a short candle lighting just to do a really brief centering. If you happen to have a candle nearby, grab it. Lighting a candle is one of the really magical ways that we can signal to our deep self, our soul, our unconscious, that something special is happening. And we know that light is magical and we know candlelight is magical. So as we light this candle, as this beautiful new uh, beeswax candle that I've been saving, and we light this candle in honor of the divine feminine within the divine feminine and the divine masculine coming together in sacred union. We light this candle in honor of the light that we each carry and that we, as we hold and increase and amplify this light, that we hold this light within us as we go through the challenges, the lights and the joys of our lives and the, as well as the difficulties. So we set the candle aside, make sure that's in a place where it can be safe. And so I wanted to start really just with talking a little bit about who was Mary Magdalene, really? Why is she important now? Why is she popping up everywhere? And who am I really to share this with you? When I started studying her uh, and being guided by her, no one was really doing this. We're a scant few. And so I want, we'll share with you a little bit about how that came to, how I came to be here with you today. So today we'll meet the historical Mary Magdalene, and then we'll also experience the spiritual Mary Magdalene that came to me in meditation, and which is how I created and wrote the Magdalene Path book. And I'll share with you some readings from that book today. And I'll also share the Magdalene Rosary and a little bit about my story. Because it's important to me that that while I can share with you, I think what's unusual about me is I, I'm not a biblical scholar, I'm not an academic, but I do have knowledge about the historical aspects. I've researched the historical aspects of Mary Magdalene, and that's kind of where my path started. I was very curious about her, but back in the day, it wasn't so easy to find lots of information about her. And so, so you know, that I would get, that would just get put aside, but she would keep coming back to me. I would just keep being drawn to her and eventually was guided to connect with her spiritually through a practice that I use called listening to spirit, which led to these amazing downloads that I received and crafted into the Magdalene Path book. So um, I'd like to be sharing with you some historical points, some facts, maybe some archeological data, gleanings from my own research and my own intuited channeled insights that I received in meditation with Mary Magdalene. So I'm going to be sharing both. I'll be sharing an energy healing tool and guide you into your own experience of the Magdalene. Because for me, that's really what's important. It's not really all about me and what I have to say. It's really about what your experience is of her and how she can be a pathway to awakening of your own soul self which I call the feminine soul, which I call the, which is what many call the divine feminine. And then we'll have some time for sharing and question and answers. And like Julian said, if you just want to stay in that energy and simply leave quietly and bask in the experience. So I wrote the Magdalene Path. Well, I published the Magdalene Path 10 years ago, wrote it slightly before that, obviously. The whole process of receiving the material and then crafting it into a book is a story unto itself that I won't get into today. 
but it was during a time when I was really, maybe you can relate. I was really, a lot of things in my life were very good on the outside. My life looked really good. I was living in a beautiful place. I had, I was in a, a sweet relationship. I lived in a beautiful community. I was living in a custom home on a river. And I remember looking out through this big picture window one day and just feeling dead, just feeling despair. I knew that that was something was not right with that. I had so many things that were signs of my success. And yet inside, I felt like something was missing. I knew that there was something more. And so I started a quest for my own purpose, if you will. I wanted to, I wanted to know what was I really here for? I was, I was doing, I had a private art therapy practice. I was doing good work in the world. And yet it felt like there was more for me. And so I connected in with a practice that I call listening to spirit where I journal and I can start to hear the voice of inner wisdom, higher guidance speaking to me. And in those moments, I started to get the message that I should connect with Mary Magdalene, tell her unsold, untold stories and be part of the awakening of the divine feminine. When this first started happening, it was probably in the might even been the late 80s, certainly was in, into the 90s. This is a long time ago. This is way before the current phase of um, like sort of interest that we see with Mary Magdalene. And honestly, I have to tell you, I just was like, no, <laughs> just no, no, thank you. That just sounds way too hard, frankly, a little too weird, way too weird. And um, I just didn't feel like I was up for the challenge. I didn't feel like I could do it. I didn't know what was being asked of me. <clears throat> and I share all that in case you too sometimes have a call or a feeling that there's more that you're meant to be doing or you're getting guidance about moving in a certain direction in your life and you feel afraid. Feeling afraid is not always the best reason not to do something. It can be. Sometimes, you know, there are real dangers out there in the world and we're being guided not to go in that direction. <clears throat> Other times, it's really our own egos, our, the voice of our own, um, our own personality, our persona, who is saying, "No, no, this is going to change too much." And uh, and that's really what happened. I kept asking that question about my purpose. I kept getting the same answer, and 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 I really was. I kept asking because I kept hoping I'd get something easier to do, but. <clears throat> As it turned out, this was the path really that I was meant to take. And I so I eventually said yes. And I started receiving all these divine downloads, stories, messages, guide, some of its guidance for me, some of them stories about her life, some of and I feel like all of it was really meant for you. So I included a lot of it. I included all, you know, what I could in the book so that you can also read the backstory sort of of my own process, as well as the messages from Mary Magdalene, because sometimes, sometimes the struggles that I was going through might resonate for you. So I um, developed the book. And uh, since then, I've been offering a spiritually based counseling. I do private sessions and the Magdalene Path program, which I'll be doing later this year, for those who really want to dive deeper into connection in the divine feminine way. Because really, that's what we're doing is we're learning how to live in a new way. It's like we're putting in a new operating system. We're not discounting or denigrating the masculine. The masculine is powerful. And I'll be talking about how, how these are meant to be more in balance. But for many of us, we want to heal the wounds of the patriarchy. And we can do that with and through Mary Magdalene. So as Julie mentioned, I offer a monthly book club and meditation circles and, ro and a rosary, a Magdalene rosary, that I received, and um, you'll see the links to connect about those um, here later. But I'd like to start with just a really short centering and the rosary so that we can align ourselves in Magdalene energy. Uh, just I'll just say the prayer briefly. When we do the full practice, we say it many times, like in a traditional rosary, although this is not a traditional rosary. This is not the rosary to Mother Mary, although that's a powerful practice. And if you're doing that and feel aligned with that, that's awesome. So we'll do that prayer. And this is not, I always like to say that this is not about praying to her, worshiping her, but about aligning with her, aligning with her energy as an emanation of divine feminine consciousness. So just let's just take a moment to close our eyes. 
allow ourselves to settle from wherever else we've been before here. Letting that drop to one side. And on the other side, letting drop wherever you're going to be going to from here so that we can just come now into empty presence. Feeling your breath move more deeply into your body. Our body holds so much wisdom for us and I like to guide my clients to breathe all the way down into our hips. into our sacred wombs, into the golden bowl of our pelvis. And if you're a man, that would be in your second chakra. And I'll just offer this prayer. If you want to learn more about it, we can do that later. Hail Magdalene, full of light, full of light. The way of love is with you and me. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Magdalene, Sister Divine, awaken the path of the roads, now and forevermore. Blessed be. Amen. So who is the Magdalene? Some of you may be brand new to this information or this or, or this being, and some of you may have lots of experience. What I was called to talk a little bit about today, which I wouldn't normally really mention, but being the weekend before Easter and being that Good Friday is tomorrow, Easter is Sunday, it seems to make sense to talk a little bit about the Easter story in the Roman Catholic Gospels and, and how her actions showed that she was a leader and his wife. So she's mentioned more times than any other woman in the Bible, at least in the New Testament. And she's mentioned more than Mother Mary. She's mentioned in all four of the Gospels. And, uh, and she's mentioned at all of the sites in all of the events of Easter weekend. Last Supper, the anointings times two, crucif the crucifixion, when he was taken down, when Jesus was taken down from the cross, and at, when he was at the tomb, when he appeared to her at the tomb, and then and the next day. That's a lot of times for her to be mentioned in a story that's you know ostensibly about someone else. And the only one that could do these things, the only one who could be in these places and touch him and, and tend to him in this way would be somebody in, who, according to the Jewish tradition, at least the Jewish tradition at the time, would be his wife. And since many of us aren't really familiar with this older tradition, we lose this meaning of her. So it's like they, in the old tradition, they wouldn't have even need to say, have needed to say that she was his wife or his partner because everyone in that time and space would know that. And there's a beautiful image that we read in many of those uh, canonical gospels. And when I say canonical gospels, I mean the four traditional gospels of the New Testament Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So there's a beautiful image of her with Mother Mary who I call Great Mary, some call the Virgin Mary, although I don't think she was a virgin, not in the way we think of it, and another Mary. Why? Why all these Marys? Well, as you come to learn, Mary was really a title. It wasn't really a name. And they were at the foot of the cross. So imagine the three of them there, probably others who were unnamed. The men had pretty much fled at the time. They were all, they were all scared. They were like in hiding. And they were holding this energy of his transition. They were the ones that were there witnessing and holding the space. And I think that's just really, I think there's so much there that we don't really even know or notice 
to unpack because these stories are things we've just heard. Anybody that's been raised Christian and even people who aren't, we've heard these stories over and over and they become sort of bland in our in our minds, in our memory, unless we really start to look and question and be curious. So the women were present throughout and though, and yet we miss the significance of that, though they were hiding in plain sight. Jesus even says in the four canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that when this story is told, it'll be done in the memory of her. And yet, even in the gospel where that's mentioned, her name is not mentioned. And yet, we know it was her. We can we can sort of sort through the different pieces like detectives and see that it was her. Another interesting story is that after Easter, tying, to, of course it wasn't called Easter then, but tying into this whole idea of Easter and Easter eggs, have you ever wondered where that came from? Many of us think of that as like, oh, bunnies and fertility and fertility uh, festivals and rites and ceremonies of that time. And that's true. But there's another story, it may be apocryphal, but it's held in the uh, Eastern Orthodox tradition that uh, that after what I call the ordeal, the death and resurrection of Jesus, Mary Magdalene went to the emperor, was it Tiberius? Might've been, went to the emperor and said, and, and said this, she just went to complain about how the whole thing was handled and, and, you know, talked about seeing him and things. And the emperor said, well, if that's true, then, um, then you should, then that's no more true than this egg turning red. Apparently there were eggs there. I'm not exactly sure why, but maybe because of this other tradition and the egg turned red. So you may have seen pictures of Magdalene with a red egg. And that's where in the Eastern Orthodox tradition, that's they paint red eggs red. And that's where the Easter egg tradition that we know of it, know, know of came from. I also really sense it's a subtle uh, sort of clue, uh, a rose petal on the path, if you will, about her being pregnant. Because in many traditions, it's known that Mary Magdalene uh, after the ordeal, went to Egypt, eventually traveled to France and had a daughter with her. Some traditions feel she had other children as well. But at that time, she would have been pregnant. So I like to think about that, having the egg, having the double symbolism. So there's some new scholarship also, new meaning, well, in 1895, the Gospel of Mary was discovered. It didn't become fully translated until it, it was like a comedy of errors of how it was meant to be and somebody was going to translate it and was taken to Germany and then that person dies and then something else happens and then there's World War I and trans changes hands, is sold in some shady deal. Then World War II happens. I mean, it's quite a comedy of errors. And I think it was not really translated until the 1970s. Although most of the books that I've seen that are published about the Gospel of Mary were not published in uh, in the nine until the 90s, at least in English. In English. But in those in that book, in the Gospel of Mary, she really they, they tell a story about how at at the or, after the ordeal, she's with all of the apostles and the disciples, and they're all like moaning and anxious and and wailing and like basically in a in a puppy pile of freaking out. And she kind of stand stood up and just basically said, Hey guys, come on. Let's let's get it together here. We know what we need to do and we know how we need to do it. I'm obviously paraphrasing. And in that moment, she really found her center and she claimed her role as leader. Really, from her witnessing the resurrection, she became the apostle to the apostles. They call the apostle apostolatum, I think. And that's really when she was given the torch. But I also feel like this moment was really the moment where she stood and said, I am the Magdalene. She became the Magdalene. Magdalene means the watchtower, the keeper of the flock. She was the priestess and leader in her community. And she, it's well known that she and the other women supported uh, Jesus and the ministry. In, the, in another Gnostic gospel, another one of those texts that was hidden and found 
in the late 40s in Egypt, they refer to her as the one who knew all, which really is another term for uh, Sophia in the Gnostic teachings. Yeshua in those in those books, Yeshua is his name in Aramaic. Jesus is his Greek name. Yeshua also mentions twice how loved and revered she was. Mary, she's basically he basically says, "Mary, you're the one who gets it," and he calls her out. And this really tells tells us all about her role. So there's lots of different ways in which we can go into the current. Uh, or the, the traditional teachings, as I showed, and as into some of these Gnostic teachings, like I was just speaking to. I mean, there's you, you, a world of study just on any one of those books or any one of those stories. We don't have time for that today. But I thought it would be great to share also a little bit about, so that's kind of some of the history side of it. And, but to share a little bit about what my divine connection revealed. Because really, we can start to see Mary Magdalene as a healer, a leader, and a guide. And that was what a priestess was. But that's a term that we don't really know anymore. You know, that's a term that's been really denigrated and disappeared. So anyway, I thought I would just hop into the Magdalene Path book and share a bit about what I received about Mary Magdalene. We're here. And Claire, um, just before you begin, can I just yeah. jump in and ask a question? Absolutely. I'm I'm so I'm curious in the in your own personal experience. So you knew the historical story, and most of us I'm thinking here know the story of of um Mary Magdalene, how in Christianity she was for almost 2000 years uh, denigrated as a whore. That is yeah. um, how she was thought of until recently. She has not only been um, all of her information was released by the Catholic Vatican mm -hmm. and she was sainted. She became Saint Mary Magdalene. Um, so we have this sort of historical point of view. And I'm wondering before, and, and as you're about to share from the book and from the path, um, how, what is the experience of meeting the Magdalene for you? Like, how did you, how did you get, the, receive this information? Yeah, so I, as I mentioned, was really questing for my purpose and was really getting the message about uh, connecting with her. And I had an experience, which I write about in the book, where I had been getting glimmers of the, that and doing that. And I, and basically, I was in med lying in meditation. I was in act in an acupuncture session. I kind of feel like it was like, okay, now's our chance. We've got her. <laughs> you know, she's she can't move. And so I, because I was you know, had on the table, acupuncture needles, the needles and, and acupuncture needles in me. And I was meditating, which is what I always did. And I just saw this brilliant light come in through the room. It just like filled the room with this light. Uh -huh. And she came to me and she shared, hi, basically, hi, it's me. I can share that, that piece actually. Beautiful. Okay. I was just curious what your ex direct experience, because that's my also my opening and my welcoming and my invitation to all of us here today is to stay open, especially when we begin the practice. Absolutely. To a direct experience with this yes. beautiful presence we know as the Magdalene. Absolutely. Yes. And she said to me, Greetings. We delight in the recent interest in my story. It's the oldest tale of neglect and betrayal, centuries of de denying my presence, accomplishment, and stature by those in power. This developed into a bigger story to, to humanity than the loss of my personal herstory. It resulted in a deep dishonoring and discounting of the feminine, experienced by all women for millennia. In this, we replaced misplaced the balance of power between Jesus the Christ and myself, the Magdalene. This was a magnificent and ex ex supreme experience between us, one we're coming back to 2,000 years later. This was a huge loss, for it sorely upset the balance and dynamic between the masculine and feminine principles. But I'm getting ahead of myself. And she goes on to share some other pieces. 
And that was one of the, that was really the first time that she came to me and started talking about what the over, what the bigger picture of why, why was she important and why was she coming now? That's beautiful, yeah. powerful. I feel that for all of us, especially as women. And as we look through our ancestral lines, how women overall have certainly been denigrated our value our honor and we see that in the fall of the priestess which i talk about all the time you know what happened we at one time had priests and priestesses and priestesses that's and then, right right and in early christianity we had the desert fathers and the desert mothers that's and they right. were held as equal and deeply valued and honored and celebrated until the formation of the actual Catholic Church itself. And so that's it's right. just well put and beautiful that we each have that Magdalene within us, that watchtower of the flock, so to speak, within us. So thank that's you right. for giving yeah, me Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so many different pieces that are juicy that I think relate to this topic. Uh, and she shares to me, she shares with me and us early on, as you have greetings dear one i'm one the one known as the magdalene i'm one of many priestesses of light and i come to share the wisdom the wisdom gifts of my teachings there's tools i will share with you let me refresh your memory much has been written about me much truth much malice there's no point in finding fault but it is no surprise that there are many who are interested in my life for there is much to be gleaned i carry a flame that cannot be extinguished I'm one of a long line of healers, women of power and mystery, wise women and priestesses. Through the centuries, we've not always been favored and many of us have come to an early demise. As some have correctly suggested, I am from a royal family, one of the 12 tribes of Israel and on the priestess path. Most scholars are aware that the family line of Benjamin from which I descend was of the priestess clan. I didn't know that I needed to then go do a little research and see the time I was really not doing any research because I wanted my own what I was receiving I had enough doubts and challenges with what I was thinking about what I was receiving I wanted to be I wanted it to be as clean and pure as it could be uh what is forgotten or swept away is that there was also a line of female priests and monks who you would call priestesses sisters and nuns and this is how I came to be a Mary. The name Mary is not a name at all. It's a title, much as today you would call someone Mrs., Judge, or Reverend. In the time we lived, there were still temples devoted to the goddess, as there were temples devoted to the god. There were temples that venerated both. And this is where I went. went. The training was still separate, as each gender, which are different energies, needs to cultivate its own magic and power the effect of your intention to be effective. The practice of gen gender separation is often misunderstood in your time, but it was used because it's been used as a mean to split, discredit and dispower women. But in ours, it was not, and it was well understood. Women spent time in the temple devoted to the goddess, the sacred form, the sacred feminine form of the all creative universal source. Men devoted time in their temple, which we'll not spend much time discussing the remnants are rem written about elsewhere and very much in evidence still. Then she goes on to share about what the temple was like. And I'll just add this as a, as a picture for you to be receiving. The building was made of earth, rounded, smooth, and golden like the sun. Its thick walls kept us cool in hot weather and warm from the fire in cooler times. Benches were carved out of the walls with gemstones embedded in the cornices and around window, the round and around the windows. By the light of candles and oil lamps, the stones shimmered and sparkled with radiant light. Around the perimeter were hand molded niches, co cozy sitting spots for private conversation and contemplation. Light tubes were in the roof to bring in light and vent air and fume, a simple mechanism to keep out foul weather. It was a beautiful and hallowed space. Women came here for generations. So I would sit in meditation. I would have my laptop ready and I would engage in this practice through meditation, inviting Magdalene in after, you know, after creating a sacred space and creating protection and, and whatnot. And these are the kinds of messages I started to receive. 
Beautiful. And um, so let's see, what else did I want to share with you? Um, so, okay, so that's all, that's all well and good. It's awesome to, <laughs> to reinvigorate our ideas about what this time might have been like. I think it really helps to reanimate ourselves to, to uh, especially living in American culture, which can be very strangely secularly uh, religious. I won't even get into that. But you know that that we do we we have this. Many of us have a spiritual path, and yet we live our lives in a very secular, non soul oriented way. And I'll share a little bit about what we can do about that in a moment. But I feel like she's important now, and she's coming to us now because she is this healer and leader and guide, what I like to call a priestess. And, and she is a messenger for us for following our own call, our own heart's calling, to tap into our own heart and compassion in the storms of life. And part of why I think she's so important, along with other gods and goddesses who people are becoming interested in, but she's, she's the one that is at the heart of the Christian story. She's at the heart of the Christian story, which dominates our cultural landscape, whether you're Christian or not, that it's, it's infused everywhere. And when we lose her, the goddess in the gospels, I like to call her, when we lose her, we lose the divine feminine. And when we lose those divine feminine images, we lose a way for those of us that are women to relate to this to this aspect of ourselves as as holy as divine. I mean, how many of us were brought up to think we're holy? How many of us on a daily basis when we're struggling are using our own awareness of our own holiness as as a tool to sort of solve the crisis that we're in? Yes. And I think that that's a practice. It's 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 not a one and done. It's a practice and that's something that we can do. And that's really was a key teaching that I received when writing the Magdalene Path was that this loss of the the loss of the divine feminine is a is a powerful was a powerful injury in the consciousness of women that we are repairing, repairing, pairing again, remembering, membering again. So we're bringing these pieces back in. And I see Mary Magdalene as an emanation of Sophia consciousness, that divine feminine consciousness. And she pairs with Jesus, who's also sometimes called Yeshua, Isa, Jesus, Jesus, spelled different ways, depending on the culture and the translations. And that's what, so, so, and they they came together to show us a different way, to show us a way of union and balance. Mm. And to show us the way of love, which is what Mary Magdalene taught and what the Cathars, who were the people that lived in uh, south of France, northern Italy, northern Spain, that those folks, that's a long, that's another story for another day, who the Cathars were. But she she taught there and they received her teachings and infused them into, into southern France until uh until the powers that be sought to eliminate them. Yet another genocide. Mm. So we're awakening the divine feminine to balance with the masculine, the divine masculine, to re repair, to reinstate what was lost. And with restored divine feminine and masculine, we can start to actualize, catalyze, embody union, divine union within ourselves and with others. And otherwise, without the divine feminine, it's like, it's like we've got this sort of teeter totter that's there's just one one part, so it's un imbalanced. Beautiful. And divine union is really is is as the name implied union with the divine, and that's really an act of love. And that's not really about romance, although it could show up in your life as romance. But love as a state of being, love as a vibration, love as a frequency. So awakening the divine feminine is really about uplifting consciousness into a state of love. Uh, so I want to shift gears in just a moment to a practice so that we can have a bit of an experience about that. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because like I said, all this stuff is great food 
for the mind, but we also want, and, and hopefully food for the heart as well. And we want, but we want to bring these more into our, these teachings into our bodies and into our lives. And that really has to do with daily practice. Daily practice and community are two, I think, foundational things because we really need, in order to walk and live a path of love, we need, you know, we need to do that. And the easiest path to that sort of love vibration is gratitude. We can talk more about that another time. But releasing resistance to our 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 ego to be of uh, being guided. I mean, I certainly had that. I was just sharing with you how much resistance I had to being guided. But that we can allow ourselves to step back and allow life to flow in and through around us. So we start to replace worry. How many of us uh, have worry as a regular diet? We can replace our worry with love. We can start to utilize faith and trust, gratitude and hope. Start small, start small with daily replacements. And like I said, surrounding ourselves with beloved community who support us and who reflect this no, new way of being. The Divine Feminine Network is that way. I have a community on Patreon where we do that. There's places where we need to be able to remind each other because we fall out of that. We can say, hey, hey, Julian, hey, Claire, there's, uh, what about this? Um, don't forget the truth of who you are. And go, oh, right, yeah, 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 okay, good. So let's shift into having an experience of Mary Magdalene. Because I feel like part of why we're here today, 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 and in general, is she's, you know, she's very available to us. She wants us to be connecting with her. It's not about, it's not about me, look at me, look at me. It's about me bringing her to you. So let's just take a moment to close our eyes. Allow yourself to settle back into your seat. And start to deepen your breathing. Uncross your legs if they're crossed so that your feet are touching the ground, which naturally then stimulates your own grounding, connection to Mama Gaia, Mother Earth. And as you breathe more deeply into your belly, into your hips, into the golden bowl of your pelvis, you can start to receive some of that earth energy and grounding into your body. As the energy of spring rises, like plants and flowers blooming, Allow, allow that earth energy to rise up into your feet and legs, up into your pelvis, your belly. And exhaling, releasing any stresses and tensions that you might be holding there. This alone is a powerful practice, and if I taught you nothing else, this would be valuable to do. Because here we can give back some of the stresses that we're holding in our, in our bodies. Give it to the earth who is so large and big and loving and receptive. She's happy to take it from us. And then bringing your attention to the top of your head, to your crown at the top of your head, maybe even slightly above it, to your eighth chakra, but your crown, feeling your crown spin open, allowing the starry light of the heavens to start to pour into your crown. much as in the same way as we did below, breathing in from above into your crown, into your third eye, allowing that starry light from the heavens to start to filter down into you. Maybe it's swirling, maybe it's dripping, running. Meeting with this earth energy in your body, 
maybe they swirl around each other, or maybe they pass out through the opposite poles of your being. And feel yourself here sitting in this beautiful circle. Notice yourself sitting on a beautiful seat, a throne. Feel, sense, or imagine what that throne, what your seat might look like. Maybe it's earthen and, and it's outside or stone. Maybe it's upholstered, lush and elegant. Maybe you're sitting on the ground, wherever that might be. Just feel, sense, or imagine that your your throne, your seat in the circle. Feel a circle of protection around us. The guides and guardians, beloveds that are walking with you always. And as you're feeling them, coming forward, I want you to notice one particular one, robed in red, appearing perhaps from the mists. Slender and small, with auburn reddish hair, you start to see the one known as the Magdalene moving towards you. Maybe she moves slowly. Maybe she's quickly right up to you, nose to nose, belly to belly. Either way. And if you don't see her, because not all of us are operate that way, that's totally fine. Nothing's wrong. You're still having the energetic experience of her coming to you. Feeling, feel what her energy is like for you. There are many different aspects or emanations of the Magdalene. Some would say one that ones that lends with each of the different chakras. And you don't have to know which one or be attached to a certain one. Just notice which, just notice that the Magdalene is coming towards you and is with you. Notice what she's wearing. She's usually often robed in red. She might be wearing a veil, a crown. And notice if she's carrying anything in her hands. Does she have anything in her hands that she's bringing to you? And I'm sensing that for many of us, she's putting her hands or she wants to put her hands on your body. Maybe that's two hands on your shoulders. Maybe that's a hand on your heart. Maybe it's a hand on your womb and heart or at your back, your low back. And allow yourself to receive her. Allow the doubting voices to be quieted for now. Listen what she has to say to you. And maybe you have a, a question or a, a challenge that's in your heart. You could ask her about that.
She might even put her hands over your head as if to catch the golden liquid light. And then turn her hands so that golden ball of liquid light enters your crown offering you the Magdalene blessing. And that golden ball of liquid light goes wherever it needs to. May fill your whole body, may go to a particular spot or different places. You don't need to guide and direct it. It go, knows where it needs to go. This light is intelligence, is love. Beautiful. As it's time for this meeting to end, she steps a step back from you. You bow to each other, hands in prayer position, perhaps bowing to each other, temple to temple. And she steps back another two steps and starts to fade back into the all that is, knowing that you can always reconnect with her and you can return to this meditation in the replay. And she fades back into the circle of support that's around us. And you notice the circle that we're sitting in and you notice the chair that you are sitting in and you start to feel that chair is being in this time and space, following yourself back from that place into this time and space, into this room. So we have some time to receive some shares and some questions. Lovely, full of light, we love that. Um, is there any particular way you would like to, to invite people to do that, Julian? I'm a little bit altered, my. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll, um, I, we have a few minutes. We could take a few shares or, mm -hmm. or questions if anyone has one. I I think I'll begin by just sharing for myself. Um, I really felt uh, a presence pouring light into the crown of my head. And I, uh, when you said, you don't have to direct it. It knows where to go and what to do. That was the healing for me. <laughs> and, uh, and the message I received was um, to keep writing, which was was just a wonderful message for me to receive. So on that note, um, I'll pass it on if anybody wants to raise their hand. And Yeah. Anybody else want to share any messages they received or anything about it or any questions? That yeah. is the Magdalene blessing, which is also in the book was with that that piece there. Oh, I want more of that. <laughs> the direct experience, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, I think it's important. It's certainly in our first meeting here um, to kind of get an overview of the Magdalene, the historical Magdalene. Mm -hmm. But as we move forward, it's about having our own direct divine connection. Yes. And That's awakening right. that within ourselves. 
Thank That's you, right. Claire. Okay. And then taking that into our life. Because mm -hmm. it's wonderful to sit on the cushion and have the, the downloads and the insights and the direct connection experiences. But how is that playing out two hours from now or two days from now? That's yes, that's really that's really our work. What action can we take that's in that's alignment right. with this exactly. divine feminine uh yeah. power i would say but also for me in this experience softness so yeah so i'm we're coming to time is there anyone who would like to share otherwise i will begin to close our circle okay jonathan if you unmute uh for, yeah for me the don experience was Magdalene's smile and um, there was just a uh, kind of a gleam in her eyes that was very uh sweet and beaming and, and very knowing I, I I felt uh just understood um this is a slightly new element of experience of Magdalene for me so there was a um so so that that was um there's a certain kind of kindness um mm. and so that was that was strong and by the way i do have to point out the eastern orthodox churches have never believed she was a prostitute they don't believe that she they don't have a belief she was married to jesus but they've never believed she was a prostitute they've always thought that yeah. was some weird western strange thing sure so. right because the split Thank happened you, before that uh -huh. right very good thank you the, the, the split between the east and the west took place in the 11th century but it was as early as the 6th century that the west was adopting this belief she was a prostitute but the eastern orthodox said ah, come on good. guys they they yeah. still they they always call her apostle to the apostles yes that's gorgeous. So, I know. I know. Beautiful. If yeah. there are no other questions, I'm going to close our meeting by saying thank you, not only to you, Claire, for leading us and helping us celebrate and awaken in this way, but just to everyone for coming on. I want to say, you know, happy celebration time, whatever you're going to be celebrating this weekend, but to bring the energy of um, reverence Mm -hmm. and celebration and honoring into your day so thank you all for being here and i hope i just want to i just want to say one last thing is that okay yeah we know that there may be challenges ahead maybe you're in one right now and this is the moment to practice to build the skill and the ability to turn our hearts and our minds to love and to trust in the divine so that when we experience rocky times which will happen that our heart our mind and heart set is ready and available and we don't have to collapse into the third the 3d mainstream mindset of fear and anxiety and panic and and all of that we can catch ourselves we have tools to make this shift we don't necessarily do it right away just like magdalene was in the the puppy pile of upset and she stood herself up and said hey wait a second guys there's a nut we we got this we know how to do this so we know there's more to this world. We've been trained to believe than we've been trained to believe. And we know that there's a way to access it. So rosary, the prayer, meditation, being in nature, these are all standard in all traditions. And there's a reason for that. And also community, again, the Divine Feminine Network, uh, Magdalene Path in Patreon, different kinds of things like that. There's ways that we can work with each other and catch each other. She's not returning. Mary Magdalene is not returning to be worshiped. She's here to remind us to remember the path of the rose, that the way of love is available. If it was there for her in the ordeal of her beloved being murdered in her eyes, before her eyes, we can do this too. So find a community here, wherever, lean in, practice together. I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Blessings yeah. to all.